Tonight, Project Ara has a launch date, what Amazon's smartphone might look like, and why it's important that Twitter has bought Ganip. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 66 for Tuesday, April 15th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN and the number two. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Google's Project Ara modular smartphone has a launch date. Ara leader Paul Aramenko told an audience at the first Ara Developers Conference at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California, that the model is scheduled to go on sale in January of 2015 for around $50. It's dubbed the Gray Phone, and it's Google's first vision and version, really, of its ambitious Project Aura plan that allows people to swap out physical components quickly and easily. Aramenko explains, quote, it's called the gray phone because it's meant to be drab gray to get people to customize it. Okay. More details have emerged about Amazon's upcoming smartphone. Last week, the Wall Street Journal reported that the company's phone will be announced in June and released in the third quarter, and that the phone featured a glasses-free 3D interface. Today, Boy Genius Report published what it claims is prototype photos of the unreleased device and that a second entry-level device will also feature lower-end specs and launch time sometime after this time. Sources tell Boy Genius that Amazon's upcoming smartphone will have a 3D interface hardware, in fact, and will include a total of six cameras, besides standard front and back cameras, an additional four front-facing cameras that work with other sensors to power the software's 3D effects. No word on a name for this fancy phone yet, if indeed the prototype pictures are to be believed. Well, Roku is firing back at Amazon's Fire TV, or at least catching up with an update for the Roku 3 that adds new voice control features to your TV via the official Roku iPhone app. Previously, voice controls were only available via the company's updated HDMI Roku stick. Now, Fire TV bakes voice navigation right into its remote control, and the same feature via an iPhone app might not work as seamlessly, but Roku says the update should roll out to everyone by April 22nd, and you can see for yourself. Yahoo's latest earnings report is in, and the company pulled down 38 cents per share on a $1.087 billion in revenue, which is on par with analysts' expectations. Revenue from display advertising was up 2% compared to a year ago. Search revenue was up 9% to $444 million. Yahoo also announced that it had 430 million mobile users, which is up from a previously reported number of $400 million. However, the real fun is happening at Chinese Alibaba Group, 24% of which is owned by Yahoo, so they report the earnings. It saw revenue rise 66% to $3.1 billion, with a 110% increase in net income for the fourth quarter to $1.4 billion. Now, like we told you last week on Tech News Tonight, today is the day for mere mortals such as ourselves to have a chance to buy Google Glass if we were not already explorers. The one-day-only sale is Google's way to get glass to the masses. No word yet if they sold out or how many were in fact offered. But hey, if you have $1,500 laying around, I say go for it. Coming up, not to be outdone, Samsung files a patent for a Google Glass-ish earphone. And next, I'll be chatting with Lauren Hawkinson from GigaOM about the importance of Twitter buying Knip. But first, let's take a moment to thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. lynda.com offers thousands of online video courses, software, creative, business skills, whether you want to learn about the latest software applications like Lightroom Mobile, or how do you build your own iOS app? Maybe you don't know where to start. The features and functions of Google Glass, it's all there with a lynda.com subscription. As a member, you'll receive unlimited access to the entire course library. You'll learn from top experts. All of the courses are high quality productions, not homemade video junk that you find on YouTube. This is good stuff. 
You might have 15 minutes, you might have 15 hours, but either way, you can learn at your own pace on your own terms. When you finish the course, you even get a certificate of completion, which then you can publish to your LinkedIn profile. It's only $25 per month for the access for access to the entire lynda.com course library. Or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. You can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial at lynda.com slash tn2. Access the entire library, over 2,400 courses, all free, seven days. lynda.com slash tn2. And thanks to lynda.com for sponsoring this episode. All right, joining us now is Lauren Hawkinson, a staff writer over at GigaOM. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Sarah. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Doing well. So let's talk a little bit about Twitter's latest acquisition, a company called GNIP, G-N-I-P, which has yes. access to Twitter's full fire hose, and not that many companies do, correct? Yes, actually, it's one of only four companies that still has access to Twitter's Firehose feed. They're able to package and resell that data. The only other companies that are actually able to get this data are Data Sift, a Japanese company NTT Data, and Topsy, which was actually acquired by Apple earlier this year for $200 million. Now, is it, does this seem like some sort of a defensive move if Topsy is now owned by Apple and has the same access that, uh, that Ganip has? Does Twitter feel it needs to compete with Apple, at least on some data par? Uh, absolutely. I think that a lot of this is Twitter's uh, kind of counter move in terms of, you know, getting access to this data. You know, they've really curbed how many companies are able to have access to this. And Twitter actually doesn't have its own in-house big data team that does what GNIP does. So, you know, I'm sure that they saw Apple's uh, interest in an eventual acquisition of Topsy and realized that they only had three other companies that do the same stuff. So now that they've acquired GNIP, they, are, they not only have access to everything that GNIP has, but they can sort of work out a synergy to where GNIP is actually closer to that data. They have Twitter's infrastructure at their back. And Twitter now has 60 engineers that can package and resell that data. So what does it mean for Twitter to be reselling data Data, or at least taking the idea of data reselling more seriously, who are they selling it to? Yeah, so a lot of companies actually go to GNIP and Topsy and these other companies um, to gain analytics or insights, um, drilling down, you know, Facebook's Firehose feed to find anything from hashtags to user demographics to sentiments. Um, this company has, you know, all of this access. So, you know, what uh, they're trying to do here is, you know, open up the revenue stream. Right now, Twitter only has a small portion of its revenue going towards data licensing and sales, which means that bringing Brands come to Twitter to access this data, and they really haven't opened that up yet. With having the NIP and having all of these engineers on staff, they'll actually be able to provide these rich analytics and data packages and open up that revenue stream to provide Twitter with essentially more money. So GNIP currently has uh, Twitter's uh, fire hose of data at its mm -hmm. fingertips, but also provides the idea of data reselling for companies like Tumblr and Foursquare, big data rich companies as well. Does that change now that Twitter owns the company? You know, I don't think so. I don't think that GNIP is actually going to cut off any of its, you know, ties to those companies. I think that it's actually in Twitter's best interest to keep fostering those. It's one of the reasons why you saw GNIP initially say, you know, we're standing on our own. You know, this isn't a huge thing, we're going to continue to do what we do. Um, because honestly, those companies want to give Twitter money for the data that they have. Um, and as a result, you know, the more sophisticated that that data gets, the more that that the bigger volume that that data is, they're able to charge more money for it. So, you know, you just get another happy customer. Lauren Hawkinson, staff writer over at GigOM. Thanks so much for uh, shedding a little bit more light on what this acquisition means and tell folks how they can keep up with your work online. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, gigom.com and feel free to follow me at L Hawkinson on Twitter. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Finally, it looks sort of like Google Glass without the glasses part anyway. I'm sure that's one reason why Samsung is calling this the earphone. It's a device that attaches to your ear. It has a prism display, a microphone, and a front-facing camera. Now, the company filed for a patent application with the Korean Intellectual Property Office earlier this month. No word yet if this earphone is going to be using Android or, or Samsung's own Tizen software.
interesting nonetheless. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Those always sound a lot alike, but they're two very different things. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.